Hey traders, Akil Stokes here and welcome back to another weekend review video. If you are a continued subscriber, I just wanna say thank you as always for your support. Um, and if you are new, thank you for finding the channel. Hopefully you find something that you like on here and hopefully you find some information that will leave you coming out of this video a little better than you were going into it. Um, it's been a very dull week in the market. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you a trading opportunity that we took in the live room, or I guess an, a live trade that we took in the live room, um, showcasing top-down analysis, multiple time frame analysis. And at the very end, I'll actually continue on that same pair and, and let you know about a trading opportunity, a potential trading opportunity that I have on my radar probably going in either to tomorrow or next week. Um, tomorrow may be a little bit dull because it's a bank holiday, Good Friday, so probably more towards next week. Um, speaking of tomorrow, make sure you watch until the very end of this video because I have a very special surprise. We're doing something uh, kind of cool tomorrow and you don't want to miss it. So uh, before we get into the trading recap, uh, before I show you the trade that we took in the live room, I, I do want to share with you a brief story. I've talked to a few traders this week that have become very frustrated. It's been a slow week. They're coming off a week of drawdown and they're, um, they're saying, hey, Keel, I find myself knowing that I'm, I'm angry, knowing that I'm frustrated and I can just sense it building up and you know, I know eventually it's gonna end to some pretty bad mistakes. And that's typically what happens in trading. A lot of traders fail because they sabotage themselves. It's not necessarily the system um, or even that they're a bad trader. They just sabotage themselves by making mistakes. And typically a lot of mistakes are, they come from emotions and emotions come from frustration, coming off losing weeks, having a slow week, not having a chance to revenge trade and making it back. And it reminded me of when I used to work with children that had mental and behavioral health disorders. I was a therapeutic staff support for a while while I was learning how to trade. And I, I worked with a lot of children that had um, autism or Asperger's. And I remember one of the things that they taught us is that once a kid um, reaches the point where they're going to have a meltdown, there's nothing you can do about it. It's already too late. So what you want to do is you want to monitor that status and try to intervene before that meltdown occurs. And for trading, it's the same way. If you ever find yourself slowly boiling, feeling frustrated, and you know you're headed towards uh, or headed down a wrong path, take a break. You know, one of the kids I used to work with, every time I sensed that, we'd take a, take a walk down the hallway, a 10-minute walk just to clear the mind and come back and reset. You could do the same thing if you're trading. You know, take a day off if you feel if you don't pass that mental check that you should be doing in the morning. Take a day off. Take a walk. Go to the gym. Do something to get your mind off trading and hopefully come back refocused instead of letting that frustration build up. Uh, so I did want to share that in response to those traders that asked me that question. So uh, now to the technical analysis. Let me show you some uh, some video recording of the trade that we took on the pound dollar in our live trading room. And then we'll come right back. I'll show you about a potential opportunity on the pound dollar, as well as share with you what's going on this Friday. All right, so we passed this structure level. Our next structure level is gonna be right down here again. Let's load some DSRs up. See what I get for trying to help you guys out. See what I get? Blew up my trading. Let's see if we get a DSR level down here. We indeed do, uh, we actually get two of them. I'll be looking for a retest of our levels down here. Really this 141 even handle is gonna be what I'm looking for. So 141 to about 140.50 is gonna be the area in where I'm looking to buy um, the pound dollar at. Again, if we look on our daily chart, this was similar to the level we saw right here. We had to close at 141.50 to 140.50, so it's about 100 pip zone, which is essentially the same zone as this DSR level, right? Does that make sense? See, DSR is based off the daily. It gives me the same zone I'm looking at on the daily, right? Pretty convenient there. Um, RSI is already dipped to the oversold territory. I don't think CTS wise, I don't think we're gonna get much else. I don't really see any areas that we can drag a FIB from. The only one I can see is a FIB inversion from our swing high to this previous swing low. That's a bit of a reach, but that's the only one I can see in there. Um, we go down to the 60 minute chart. And there's really just, we're, we're really just drifting down. So this is, this is looking like it's gonna be 
probably just a, a pure structure based trade here. I mean, you're not going to get a lot of Fibonacci influence. You're not going to get any advanced uh, formations here. You can reach with this harmonic move down at 141 flat. Um, but this is looking to be a pure structure based trade here. So now that we have an idea of where we're looking to enter at, what are some ideas for potential target taking? What do you guys think? You're looking at this as a potential long opportunity. Um, where are you guys thinking for targets? You do want to understand that on a higher time frame, we still are in, uh, we're, we're kind of in a weird situation, right? All right, let's head down to our 60 minute. Um, we did six here. Let's head down to our five minute chart, see if there's any day trading opportunities, and then we'll take our first official break here. Um, I don't think there's going to be anything down here. Nope. Five minute. There may be a trend continuation opportunity on the five minute. I do I do think we're gonna test that 141. Again, these these even handled numbers tend to tend to act like magnets. The market gets pulled to them, towards them. So um, lower time frame traders, you could look at this area right here. You see where the market has hit. Double bottom down here. Nice looking advanced pattern formation. Held it for the third time there. Then finally broke and closed below. If we get a retest of that level, this can be a good level to look to short 141.55, that area. You can go down to the range bar chart as well, which may provide a, a clearer picture. Again, looking right in here. So that's something to keep an eye on in advance of uh, the potential get over here there we go potential higher time frame bullish situation so we'll keep that on the radar as well all right any questions before we take our first break here uh so if remember we we left off with pound we were talking about um where's my pound chart at we were talking about looking at a potential well we'll use this one looking at a potential um buying opportunity down here 141 flat to 140 fifties um, we also talked about because we're anticipating that the market can come down to that level there may be a lower time frame trend continuation opportunity and this is where i like to take the range bars into account now we can see the same thing on the five minute right on the five minute you can see the test of our structural level here one two three the break and close below that level and you can look for the potential retracement back into that level for a potential short um, however the range bars this is why i really like them for these trend continuation opportunities or trend following opportunities the range bars just allow you to have a different perspective on the markets and as you can see it makes it a lot easier to kind of draw this thing out swing high to swing low outside of return New structure low, breaking previous structure, look left, structure leaves clues, outside of return, new structure low, and we can create a kill zone for our outside return and say if price action gets to this level, and it may just go straight down, but if price action gets to this level, we can look for a potential short opportunity to try and hop on the move going downwards. Now, like I said, it, it may never reach there. We may just continue down from this level. Um, but at least we give ourselves the chance to do some analysis and, and set up a potential trading opportunity. So watching this one as well, let's go to, depending on how we react, this is an opportunity. I'm sorry for bouncing around from pair to pair, but this is an opportunity as well for that Fib inversion trade. If we do indeed break this level, if we break our previous structure um, high, this would be an opportunity where you take that Fibonacci extension tool, invert it from swing low to previous uh, outside return, and you look for that 1618 inversion that's going to come right back into that initial, that initial kill zone that we had. That would also be a cipher formation as well. If we break above that level.
apologies for the quick analysis, but range bars move fast, guys. So um, that's just how it goes. You gotta you gotta be on on your game. So a few different scenarios here. There is the there is the um, the sell up here at previous structure. There's the one six one eight inversion trade up here um, at previous structure. And then there's a cipher formation up here at 141.55 as well. So a handful of different opportunities. If you're taking the cipher, it's very small. So it's not going to be, in my opinion, it's not going to be worth taking the cipher on its own. Um, but you could use it as a reason for entry for the bigger trades. I'm going I'm to go and get some aggressive cipher orders on here. Um, let's get back to business. Uh, was, I, <laughs> was I filled this cipher while we were gone? Let's see. I don't remember where it was at. Oh, I'm filled the cipher. There we go. Let's uh let's actually get this in. Uh filled short pound dollar at uh one four one five three cipher formation trading as TCT. All right, let's get this into the gang. Um <laughs> We're gonna have a, a prank off, aren't we? All right, let's share this with um, our syndicate members. And this pound dollar five range. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. All right, so we're looking for a move back down to previous structure, back down to 141.24. Um, now, really, we're, we're only trading one in, one out on the syndicate. So syndicate, we got to take the full targets down here. Really, what I would be looking for is a move back down to that 141 even handle. So, um, and hold on, let me just get us some other computer too. Yeah. Cool. All right, so... What you'd be looking for is this. If we can shoot for, we can basically do our analysis in the opposite way here. We can look for, we know 141 even is a zone we're looking for to come to. We could do two things. We could take a Fibonacci extension here from our swing high to swing low, this previous move. And you see we're gonna get a 1618 Fibonacci extension down here. Or you can take a Fibonacci inversion from this swing high to cipher completion back down to our C leg and you can see we're gonna get a 1618 inversion down here. So we have two Fibonacci's right here. You can go for 127 as well. Um, that's fine with second targets, but they're, the 127 is essentially at the same area as that first target. So you're better off going for the second target on here. You can see 1618 inversions at 141.04, 1618 extensions at 140.98. We know that we don't wanna be at 140.98, right guys? right guys we don't want to be at 140.98 there we go yeah um yeah so we we set our second targets about 140 141.04 that's right around the same area that we were looking for the higher time frame long opportunity and you see how you see how everything lines up isn't this isn't this awesome you see how the swing trading analysis lines up with the day trading analysis and it all makes perfect sense if we can go down there if not then we just have a losing trade but do you see how it all relates to each other? Why it's important to do this IPDE process? Right? It gives us that mind frame. It gives us that perspective on the market. We feel more comfortable. We, why do I feel comfortable with 141? Well, because we did our freaking analysis on it earlier, and that's the level we were looking for. Right? Gives us that confidence. Gives us that confidence. All right, so we'll see if this can, uh, can follow through. Maybe we can get about 25 pips or so out of it. Um, and let's go to Euro dollar next. What else? Was there anything else I was looking at? Chicken, chicken, winner, dinner. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I was watching two things at once. I was moving my, I was moving my stops to break even on my, my other deal. Um, and I was about to hit the close button and we actually, I actually got filled. So again, we had this conversation, what, um, was it two weeks ago in the private Q&A about the spread? Was it two weeks ago, guys? That was a good example. You see that my orders were up here at 120 or at 41.24, but 
but we had to we had to go through to about forty one twenty two in order for me to get filled because the broker has to get theirs. Does that make sense, guys? I'm not sure how many of you guys were in that discussion, but we had this. It was two weeks ago, I think, in our private Q and A. Yeah. Um. So we had to we had to break through it, and that's what I was watching. I I, I always like to give it a chance to break through. Um. But it, you don't fool me twice. And we broke through the first time. We reversed. If we get down there again, I'll close out at market. So when the P&L comes in, you're going to be a little less than it seems. But we actually did break through and hit the spread before I can close out, which was good. So nice little win on that. Again, we're holding for 4104s on the second part of that position. The second half of that position is going to be 4104. So we'll see if we can get down there as well. This has been an exciting day, man. We've 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 had a conversation on nutrition. We've we've blew up my computer. We we made some money on a very brilliant trade. Today is a good day. Ice Cube would say today is a good day. All right, let's go down to the 15 minute chart on Euro dollars. Here's what I was looking at on Euro. Um, again, a retest of our structure level right here. Same thing like pound dollar. We're we're slowly kind of trending down. We got a new structure low right there. Looking for a short opportunity up in here in anticipation that we're going to continue lower um, to our lower structure levels down here. I think it was 111 we had uh, we had mapped out. Now, there's two ways to go about it. The range bar is going to give you a similar look of the, the five minute chart. Um, really depends on how aggressive you are. We had a lower, low, lower close right here at 111.88. Let's just see something. This is going to be I'm going to sell this. Um, yeah, I'm going to sell this at market. We had that lower, low, lower close. I'm getting a little cheaper price right now. Come on, don't go there. Don't go there. 111.88. Stops going to be above this 112 even handle. So I've got a good protection right here with stops. Um, and we're looking for a move back down to previous structure, 111.64. So let me just, we're busy today, guys. Busy, busy, busy. Short euro dollar at one 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 eight eight. Boom, and let's send them a little. Uh, send them a little, little note over here. All right. So as we look at the pound dollar now, um, you can see we're on the four hour. We can even go down to the hourly time frame. We have reached that level that we talked about. We waited for that zone at. Um, between 141 even and, and 14050s. Now, Jason Greystone, who's the, the moderator of our London live room, they actually entered this morning on a higher, high, higher close candlestick um, formation, which is right down here at about uh, about 14080s. Now, obviously, if you're here in the US, if you're somewhere else overseas, you may have been sleeping at that time and you may have missed the opportunity to have that aggressive type of entry. Uh, not not too aggressive. It's more conservative than a conservative than a limit order, but still um, less aggressive than say a double bottom. So, so if you did miss that opportunity, I, I don't want you flipping out. I don't want you entering the trade late. That's probably the worst thing you can do. A lot of traders will see it and they'll be like, "Oh, it's moved. I'm gonna miss the move. I gotta get on board. Do it now." And you, you end up entering a hundred pips past where you're supposed to, giving yourself a lot less reward and a lot more risk. Just setting yourself up in a bad scenario. Uh, many of you guys have saw the video that I did the other week about why most traders fail. Um, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch that and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But instead of rushing into a trade, just wait for an alternate opportunity. Let's see if the market gives us a double bottom. That will give us not only um, a double bottom at previous structure support, but the RSI was in an oversold condition. So we were exhausted as we originally went down to that level. And we're most likely to have some type of RSI divergence, some bullish divergence at that level as well. And you can get the same type of opportunity at a much better price potentially and at a much lower risk than if you were to enter um, emotionally right now at market. So, you know, don't panic. There's always another opportunity in the market. Wait to see if we get a double bottom, then I'll enter next bar market. And you know what? If the market just continues up, you know, that's trading for you. You erase your, uh, erase your chart and you move on to the next pair and redo your analysis. The key is you don't want to make a mistake. You don't want to let that escalate and have it lead to that meltdown as we talked about earlier. So, um, that's it for the week. Tomorrow, here's what we're doing. I'll shoot this out to our syndicate members via email, but 
Um, there's going to be no London live room because of Good Friday, but we're going to have everyone in the New York live room for a Q&A session. So um, obviously I'll be in there. Jason Greystone from our London room is going to join us. I think Charles is going to pop his head in as well. So we're going to have a nice Q&A session with our London live room traders, our New York live room traders, and any of our syndicate members that want to join. Now, if you're not on the syndicate, I was thinking about doing a, a Google Hangout, but because there are going to be multiple speakers, it just doesn't really work too well. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to broadcast it live on Periscope. If you're not sure what Periscope is, download it on your phone. It's an app where basically I can live stream to you. Um, and if you're not into that sort of thing, um, follow me on Twitter as well. It's Akil or at thingy at Akil Stokes RTM. And what I'll do is about 10 minutes before the Q&A, or five to 10 minutes before the q and I'm gonna shoot you the link that you can watch it live on Periscope or watch it live on your computer. Um, so make sure you follow me at Akil Stokes RTM. I'll tweet it out there. If you're on Facebook, I'll put it on my Facebook page as well. Just search Akil Stokes Trader. Um, and while you're there, like the page. <laughs> so I'll see you guys tomorrow, either in the live room for the Q and A, or on one of these, uh, or on Periscope, on your phone, or on the computer, however you decide to watch it. But until then, traders, plan your trade, trade your plan. For you guys that were in the live room on Wednesday, during the the credits, I guess I'll share with you that little incident we had that caused me to hate each and every one of you. Uh, <laughs> I'll see you guys next week. Um, have a very happy Easter and a very uh, great weekend, gang. Yeah, it take, yeah just give it, um, if, if you ever do it again, Sally, just give it some time. Once you get, once you get a, a grasp of it, once you, um, especially once you learn how to use all the shortcut keys, um, it's, it's an amazingly easy platform to use, but it does take some, it does say, take some time, just like moving the charts is weird. Um, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. As long as you can efficiently execute your strategy off of, um, you know, every consi uh, consistently in the market, that's all that matters. Alt F4, what does that do? Should I be scared to push that? Ah, oh, what, did, what did that do? Oh, come on, man. Gosh, how do I, how do I bring that back? hate you does it is it gone forever is it gone forever yeah you're the worst hold i hate you why did i even entertain that hold on i hate i hate all of you all of you are the worst you guys are pathetic i'm that guy that it's, you get a big red button that says do not touch and i touch it Akil, whatever you do, don't touch this button. Ooh, what's the button do? Boom, world blows up. Gosh. All right. You guys are, you guys are all filthy. Where's where's the where's the ban Jason Greystone from the from the room button? Gosh. I've got I've got a I've got a button. I've got a button for you, Greystone. I got a button for you. Banned from room. And that that really exists. Man, you got me. Alright, we'll give it some time for these things to load up. Um I didn't say No, what's the what what did the first part of the message say? I don't know these buttons. Also was shortcut. I said, hmm, shortcut keys. <laughs> I see the part about you being a, a shameless sellout. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, let's give us some time for these charts. Now, of course, you're going to take extra long to load up right now. <sighs> um, we're gonna take a look at euro dollar when we get back. So we've been through we've we've been through pound dollar. We've been through what? We've been through Aussie cat. We've been through dollar yen. We've been through pound dollar. 
Um, we did pound yen. We just finished on pound yen. Let's go to euro dollar next. That that also offers a trend continuation opportunity. Um, let's do this. Let's take a uh, let's take a quick let's take a quick five minute break. I'm gonna shut my stuff down again and, and curse out Jason Greystone. <laughs> We're gonna take a quick five minute break and then we'll be back. All right. See you guys in a little bit. All right, gang, we're back. And uh, as you can see, I hate all of you very, very much. I'm, I'm glad you had uh, glad you had fun laughing at my expense. Um, 